One thing I love about herbalism, is, and herbalism is so interesting in the sense that it's so ancient. It's amazing. We start with herbalism and we went full circle and we're going all the way back to our roots and back, back to herbalism again. And the herbs that, that are, are, we believe that um, our herbalism comes from um, the ages. So we believe that when all the uh, cotton's well connected, we're able to walk from one to the other. And we believe that most Native American Indians come from um, from biblical uh, flood and we're from Japheth, we're from that particular tribe. Of course, we're all the same tribe anyway. But um, um, Robert practices Chinese herbalism, and I practice more Mexican American herbalism, but it's so close. It's unbelievable how close it actually is. And we look the, at the herbs too, especially ancient Chinese actually would look at herbs and barks and things, and they would see the, its texture and structure, and they would know what it's for. Like, this is really interesting. I'm going to pass this around. As Robert showed me about this one, this, close, this is for circulation and inflammation. If you actually look at it, it looks like a swollen vein with cholesterol on the side of it. It's really interesting. I'll start, I'll start with you. Hey. <laughs> you could pass that around. And, it, it, and they felt that since they had a little hole on the inside, it must be for circulation. circulation. That's just pretty correct. A lot of um, human herbs appear in, um, in uh, native California, like for instance, uh, the supplemental berries there's a representation of the male, of the, of the, you know, the male's testicles. And so it actually brings up testosterone. And um, this is the herbs. Uh, let me show you another one too, it's really good. Hold on. Sage. Yes, sage. Oh, here it is. We talk about, you know, basic herbalism is most people are, are really familiar with sage. And sage basically was used um, in ritual purposes when they used to go into the wikiup or the wigwam or the teepee or the post or whatever they, they have. And they would, sage in an area that there was dis-ease or, 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 or someone was sick and they would go in there and they would do a spiritual cleansing. But little did they know that sage is like nature's Lysol. <laughs> you know, you burn this and it, it's also, even dromata is the same thing. Um, rosemary and lavender works very well too. Um, most uh, Native American herbalists or Mexican herbalists have their favorite herbs. And mine um, is yato, which is um, Achilles milliforium. You ever Achilles? They, mm -hmm. that, that stupid heel. <laughs> they dipped him into the river of life like this, and and his, and his mother had to put a little pouch on the side, and she had to put yarrow in it so he would rub it every single day, so he wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't get him through the heel. It's the weakest point of his body. And Achilles, uh, Achilles Meliforium works um, really good for. It's, it's like a herb that heals just about everything, but it stops bleeding. You can actually take um, yarrow and make a tea out of it. If you have strong menses and you have an excess flow of blood, and you take it, it stops immediately. We actually, um, I have clients who actually keep um, yarrow in their car. If you ever get into a car accident, they can grab the bottle and take it. Um, <coughs> we had a woman too that was, uh, she had her, what do you call her, ovary exploded, and she was bleeding out, and immediately I put an ice pack and I gave her the Achilles Meliforium. And the pressure instantly went up. Right in front of the right in front of the paramedics, the people how fast that it actually worked. He was, was using that. So the nice thing about this too is that once the Indians really realized that, you know, as in, in modern medicine, this is actually used to purify blood too. It actually can it's drying, it actually can stop um, hot flashes. And you actually boil sage, it stops hot flashes too. It works very well. It's actually used a lot in Chinese medicine for certain types of female issues and for um, blood issues. So it purifies blood, in other words. It does quite a, it does quite a bit. This common sage, common weed. These are ones I find um, locally. One thing that Ultima liked to use was oregano. And oregano is my garden. It's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Pinch it and spray it all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is in seed right now. So if I, if I, I hang upside down and I save the seed so I can regrow it next year. Smell that. It's like a pinch and smell it. Really good. Now, there's a few things that we use for um, for the common cold. Oregano is one of them. Of course, you, you all know about oil of oregano, and you, you have laryngitis. You put a little drop, it tastes terrible. You put a little drop behind your throat, and your laryngitis will go right away. It has a positive transmission to bring out instantly. Um, Mexican Americans usually use um, eucalypto, eucalyptus. And that's usually used uh, if you have a really loose cough and you make a tea of eucalyptus. It helps to break up the phlegm. The in Native American uh, medicine, they use this one right here, and I think I pass this around, it'll just probably break apart all over you. 
And this one here is Moulin, or Moulin. And this one is very, what's the word? It's, it's relaxes the throat, it's good for a cloth. It's, it's so neat when you think about it, this is really, this was fresh, so it's really soft. So it soothes the cloth. What, what is that? Moulin. M U I M U E L L E N. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's that soft. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it really helps. It really helps with mm. These are the ones. These, these actually grow in the mountains where I live. And um, you know what's amazing is um, you see this in the mountains all the time. You know, it's not a common, you know, pine. What's it called? Jeffrey pine. Jeffrey pine. Jeffrey. Who's the name of Jeffrey? Scott Jeffrey. This is amazing. What's interesting about this is if you get this sticker in your finger, and if the sticker doesn't come out, you know, and then what you do is you, you cook this in oil, you make a salve out of it, and you put it on, it's pine tar salve, and then it's, split, it's, it's to remove splinters. What's interesting about the people of, used to come up in the pan for gold and for silver, and they would be starving to death because they would have no food. And they would get a hold of the needles from this Jeffrey pine. And they would boil it. And they would, and then they were freezing. And it, would, it actually warms the body. It is the highest uh, amount of vitamin C that any other plant is in this pine right here. These, it just tastes really good. I can get out of it. But the pinch, though, would, it, even a friend of mine, too, she had no vitamin C. I said, just go get the, pick the pine. And she picked it, put some honey in it, boiled it up. And she immediately uh, got basically hot. It makes your it warms the blood, so you can actually if you're actually out there cold. You can just chew on this. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Keeps you, keep you from cool. freezing to death. Yeah. <laughs> and it smells wonderful. I just picked up this morning. Uh, other things that were used for staging too, and also uh, it's used a lot in, in Native American and Mexican American folklore. My grandma used to burn certain things, especially when um, when she had people that came over that were sick, that were fighting a lot, and they had a lot of bad energy. She would burn copal. Copal. Is has an amazing fragrance to it in the sense that it's kind of myrrh-like. It's a resin, and um, for some reason, when you smell it, it's just like this is like ancient aromatherapy. You know, we've, we've, we've modernized all these things now, and you when you you smell it, it has a very grounding effect. It has the same type of a, of a um, we call it a mineral in it. This Himalayan sea salt, in fact, where it, when that's why put the salt lamps off, it keeps you more grounded. The same thing with, with this too. And then the mugwort, you would burn that to make sure that a child didn't have any bad dreams. And there was one called Obelia, which is Indian tobacco, or Indian tobacco. And that one is really interesting because if you have a child that doesn't sleep really well, and it's, Lobelia is actually used now for spasms or people that have um, epilepsy, for instance, and babies who have small seizures, and you put it on the top of the back of the neck, and it actually calms down seizures. It's very calming herb. So if you want your child to sleep well, you would actually go in and you would you would burn lobelia. Let's keep the windows closed just in case the cops think it's smoking pot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, other one is like frankincense and myrrh, and those are for sanctification. You can use frankincense and myrrh, especially in Chinese medicine and also in my medicine for uh, I, I use it for like really deep infection of the body. And frankincense is an anti inflammatory, which I think you are familiar with the term baswala. The baswala basically is frankincense. And that's used uh, for inflammation of the body and the joints. And um, what we use it, we, we burn it off too, to keep it from getting sick. If you're getting infections around the nose and, and also for inflamed nostrils, nostrils, nostrils and things like that. Yeah, what's well, interesting is like for hot energy and all this stuff. No, you can actually make it into a, a spray up the nose. I mean, it's all different things that we can actually use it for. This is more like this all the raw product that we actually have that we, we still use and we still burn. Um, we usually burn it on a piece of charcoal. And, and then we used to, in the old days, we'd have some charcoal right here and put the herbs on top of it. And of course, we would the stage in an area with it too at the same time. Right? Um, my grandmother had this ritual when someone passed away, and she, her herbs that she used, every single good and data has the, we call the three blessings. And